Hello, everybody. Um, I will be very, very fast, so don't get worried. <laughs> I just want to show you something that we have uh, been developing for some time. Before we start with this, I would like to ask you a question. Do you know what is RSP, RS3PE? RS3PE? Do you know what it is, this von Meyerburg factor? No. Yes. Many times when we are in our practice, we face some, for example, uh, journals from the hospital or some information that we don't actually remember or understand. That's why we developed this, which is called Hope Project. Hope is an anagram, as you can see. It is because of the health operation for personalized evidence. What does it mean? It is helping us to find information, but not any information, based evidence information. If we need some information about some patient that we just found, for example, RS3PE, Hope will help us to find what it is. Moreover, if the patient is a man, so Hope will look for information about a man 40 years old who lives in the rural area. So it will personalize the search for information. The project manager, as you can see, is Carlos Bocanegra. If you have any questions, you can also write to him by Twitter. Okay, and it is not a project only which we are trying to develop here in Spain. No, it is a little bit more global. You will see in a moment. To talk about hope, we have to talk a little bit about uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, once we talk about this, it is that the computers are trying to think by themselves. But it's not exactly like that. It is an algorithm. So we are creating to let the computers give us the answers we need. The most important about this is that these algorithms learn. In this picture, you can see it is not only Spain, France, or United Kingdom, uh, the ones we are using uh, inter uh, artificial intelligence. There is a lot. And we are not in this map. Once we are talking about we are GPs, we have to know about cardiology, traumatology, gynecology, public health, oncology, pediatrics, dermatology, etc. Can we remember all the information? Sometimes a little bit difficult. On, sometimes we ask ourselves, where can I find reliable information? And also, we have another problem. We have so much information now. We have info, infoxication. We have so much information that we don't know if this one, which I'm reading, it is the one at, or the article I should read. So there is too much how to decide what to read. For example, once we are talking also about artificial intelligence in medicine, now it's the trend that the computer is recognizing an image. For example, the computer is recognizing this image and saying, oh, maybe here we have cancer. How can the computer recognize an image? More or less using the same process that Hope will use with our medical records. We can say, well, we as babies, we can recognize our mother face more or less when we are two weeks. How can I teach a computer to recognize a face or an image? And for example, we have this challenge. Which one is a chihuahua and which one is a muffin? It could be even difficult to us at the first glance to detect it. So how can I teach a computer to detect it? It is a little bit more complicated. But when we, have, when we talk about our anatomy and stuff that we know as doctors, so how the human brain identifies an image, this we know, so we pass it. This is the most important. How can I teach a computer to recognize text? Because hope is based in text, okay? Uh, hope has to understand what we are writing, understand it, re first read it, understand it, search for information, and give you, giving us the, an example. And for that, it is what we have this called NLP. Do you remember today, like, uh, early, the, uh, our colleague from Savannah talking about NLP? NLP means uh, a natural language process. It, it, it is an algorithm that le lets 
the computer understand what you wrote. So I am typing my electronic medical journal. The computer is reading, understanding as the image. Why shall I have to know a little bit about NLP? Because you can see there is many applications about natural language processing. And all these applications will be based on evidence-based medicine. That's why it's important. But how can a computer read what I am reading and understand it? We normally talk in sentences, is it right? We talk word to word to word, and all the words together is a sentence. But can I say, for example, ball, leather, bus, has meaning? No, it has to be some order. And that is what we call semantics. The computer also has to understand semantics. So it is a little bit more complicated even for computers. But they can. And they comes also the ontologies, which are coming to help us. And it is helping us with, with two principal difficulties, you can see. It is uh, letting us at the articulation of information, which needs a precise vocabulary. What does it mean? When computer is reading our text, it is not reading every word. It is searching for specific words. For example, if we say, man 40 years old, who lives in Asturias, who comes, which, who comes because he has an edema of, the, of both of the hands for more or less 10 days, he doesn't smoke, he doesn't drink alcohol, he has only hypertension. So the computer will not read all. The computer will read 40, man, uh, edema, hands, hypertension. Because it's the information that he needs, information that needs to make its search. The problem are not the computers. Sometimes the problem are us, that sometimes we are giving too much information to our journals. Do you know any kind of uh, dictionary who, which we can find specific words which can help us to make uh, evidence-based search? Any vocabulary? Actually, there is many. But I guess the last one you know. You know this one? Yes, the mesh. We know it, where we use it, precisely. So that's why, that's why, that's why we will use this mesh. The computer will look for mesh characters in the journal, read them, understand it, and look for information. Where? In PubMed, which is evidence-based medicine. It was 1991, Goya the first one. As I told you. And that's why it was this project HOPE. As you can see, it is between Mexico, uh, me here in Denmark, my friends in Spain, and Argentina. We were developing this algorithm, which is letting us, which is letting the computer read the journal, find the information, and present 10 files with the 10 first uh, in, uh, results. And what is hope? As you can see, as I told you, it is first the program is communicating with the journal, then it's using natural language processing to read it, then ontology to understand it, then it's looking for information in PubMed, then it's giving a format, and then it is showing us what it found. This is more or less, as you can see here, the, 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 the hope interface. We will have an ID for the patient, we gave a name to the file, we put the age, the gender, and you can put a diagnosis if you need, and you can have the medical history. This is an example. The idea is that this algorithm will be in the medical journal, so you will not need to do nothing. Meanwhile, you're writing, this algorithm will look for reliable information. The question is, works? <laughs> and for that, we did a test. We use it hope, and we use it two medical doctors. One of them is sitting here, Saira. 
we use it. Uh, uh, we use it that we we look at for uh, information about these medical journals, and we make hope look for information and hope phone information. The information that hope found was sent to special doctors, which read it and said, "Yes, this is good. Now this is not related. Yes, this is related. No, this is related." And for that, we use the kappa Cohen coefficients to see if it was some relation between the information and the testers. Once we use the Cohen, you can see more or less the concordance and the kappa result. It means if you have more than 0.6, you have an important association. It means that it works. And also, we use this, which is called precision. What does it mean, precision? For example, for Javi, Superman is number one. For Pablo, Superman is number three. For Saira, it is number four. All of them are Superman. But it is not exactly the same image we have of that. And that's why we have to precise which one it is the right one. And for that, we use the precision model to find if Hope was finding the right information. The results were this. The results show that Hope can present the right information and you can see, as I told you, over 0 0.6, it is very good. You can see the cases. They were very good answers by the evaluators. And what about the precision? When we are talking about precision, is for example, there was a very interesting case of Leishmania. It was skin Leishmania. We wrote the case. But how showed us, for example, skin Leishmania, lower Leishmania, other order or organs leishmania. So it was a little bit difficult to hope to understand that we were only looking for skin leishmania. And that's why we use the precision. As you can see, the precision was not so high. But when we were talking about concordance, you can see it was 0 0.7 for PubMed and 0 0.78 for Medline Plus. What does it mean? Why? But wait a minute, you said about, you talk about only PubMed. Yes. But Hope was looking also for information in medical trials. It is a new drugs that are coming, and also in Medline Plus. Medline Plus, it is one website which is showing information not for doctors, but for patients. So it means that if, for example, we have one, any doubt, Hope can also help us to find information that we can say to the patient. You have it here. The conclusion is easy. It was very amazing that this algorithm works. Obviously, we have to work a little bit more of them. It was very, very, very funny that when we normally write, the patient doesn't smoke. So Hope was understanding patient smoke. So that's why we have to, we, 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 we had to uh, teach to Hope that don't or doesn't means no. And starting giving us no, some other better results. But it was really, really interesting. And this is, why, in a way, how we can use artificial intelligence in medicine. We are, starting, we are still in project, and we think that we will develop it soon, and it will be very interesting to be able to use it. As I'm telling you, this is not a program. It is something that will be inside the journal. So meanwhile, you're writing, already we'll be looking for information. And when you finish writing the journal, if you have some question, the answer is already come. Thank you very much. If you have some question, you have my email and you have my Twitter.